Hello, my name is Ralph Carter. I'm the Chief Network Solutions Architect at CDI. Today I'm going to design and configure a VMware NSX network architecture deployed on the Cisco UCSB series uh, platform. And this particular design session will not only demonstrate how to deploy NSX on Cisco UCS, but also showcase some of the cool features that NSX has to offer. So this design will demonstrate NSX features such as NSX Edge Gateways, operating in both ECMP and HA mode, uh, load balancers integrated within the NSX Edge, as well as standalone NSX load balancers, also the distributed logical VXLAN routing across all server blades, uh, with the uh, routing protocol of choice here being BGP, and implementation of a secure internal NSX DMZ, uh, as well as an internal NSX network secured with the native NSX distributed firewall. Again, all of these components hosted on the Cisco UCS platform. So let's take a look at the network architecture blueprint first. Okay, so we are looking to design a uh, secure NSX infrastructure for our three-tier application. And this three-tier application uh, consisting of the uh, web tier, the app tier, and the database tier will need to be accessed both internally and externally. We want to we wanna be careful not to disrupt the current hardware-based Internet Edge firewall design as we want to complement it with the NSX, you know, providing that security within that virtualization layer. So what you see here is the Internet connecting into the uh, perimeter hardware-based firewalls, which are hosting the DMZ on VLAN 120, subnet 10.255.120.0/24. These firewalls are running a BGP routing process, which are uh, BGP peering with uh, the internal Cisco Nexus data center core switches, where we have the luxury of routing over VPC on subnet um, 10.250.250.0/24. These data center core switches also connect the WAN and other server farms that are uh, not depicted in this diagram. And these data center core switches host the default gateways for various networks. A number of uh, those networks are the networks we need to support our NSX implementation, uh, as well as our vSphere uh, implementation. So these networks are a VLAN for vMotion, uh, which is here VLAN 110, uh, a VLAN for the VXLAN transport, which is a requirement here uh, being VLAN 200, uh, the management VLAN, and the management VLAN in my design, for sake of simplicity, will host the uh, three NSX controllers uh, here using um, the dot .107, 109 on the 172.30.32 uh, subnet, uh, it's going to host the uh, vCenter, uh, running uh, 6.0. It's going to host NSX Manager. We're running uh, 6.2.4 of, uh, of NSX. And our uh, five UCS blades that I was granted for this demo. Because we're using Fiber Channel for our storage, we do not need uh, an IP storage VLAN, such as for iSCSI or NFS. But we will need uh, VLANs for our edge gateways. In our design we will deploy two edge gateways in ECMP mode with each gateway using a dedicated VLAN for routing uh, with the data center core. In this case, for example, edge 1 uses VLAN 300 and edge 2 uses VLAN 301. Again, we have the luxury of routing over VPC, so these edges are logically dual-homed uh, to, to each core switch. Now, keep in mind, that these edges will connect into the data center uh, using VLAN back port groups over VLAN 300 and VLAN 301. Where VXLAN comes in is on the southbound. The edges will connect to a transit logical switch and, and the uh, southbound communication here uh, is all VXLAN. What else is uh, connected to this transit logical switch is the DLR, which is the distributed logical router. Pretty much the 
exploding default gateway uh, for virtual machines uh, across all server hosts. In addition, we have our uh, routing control plane hosted uh, on the DLR control VM. And for redundancy, we also have a passive instance uh, running. Uh, and the IP address of the DLR uh, control VM is .2. The DLR on the transit LS is dot one, and the edges is internal interfaces are three and four. We also have our internal DMZ. Um, I previously mentioned uh, connected to the uh, transit logical switch. You know, this internal DMZ is provided by an HA pair of NSX edge gateways, which also host integrated. Uh, load balancers within the same appliance and these DMZ edge gateways run BGP and here uh, and advertise actually their their locally connected DMZ subnets to the uh, DLR and to the two edge gateways and the the routing updates uh, propagate from the DMZ uh, as well as the DLR propagate uh, to the internal data center and as I mentioned earlier, our three-tier application needs to be accessed both internally and externally. So for our external access, we connect our DMZ edge gateways uh, to both the transit internal data center, but also the external, right, to the external DMZ transit VLAN 120. And we're BGP peering with the uh, perimeter firewalls on the DMZ interface of the uh, of the perimeter firewalls. So for our DMZ design, we configured um, a trunk interface so that we don't need to configure any DLR or DLR control VMs uh, where the logical, the, the VXN logical switch is basically off of a, a sub interface uh, off of the DMZ edge gateway. So our web server virtual machines connect to this DMZ logical switch, which is VXLAN uh, backed, and the default gateway uh, defined as the edge gateway sub-interface. And I'll show you guys later what that configuration looks like. So basically, the traffic flow for this design is as follows. As I mentioned externally, traffic comes in from the internet, hits the edge perimeter firewall. That firewall uh, sees that that traffic is destined for the um, uh, the VIP here, which is uh, 10, uh, it's actually 1055 1.5. And that request comes in from the firewall over the DMZ segment into the edges. And then the edge takes care of that, uh, uh, that VIP and forwards that traffic to the respective, um, you know, load balanced uh, accordingly uh, web server. Uh, before we get into what the how the app, uh, web server communicates with the application and database, uh, let's look at how the internal traffic flow is gonna is gonna flow. If a user uh, is coming in on the from the WAN or a server or any device that's connected internally, when that traffic needs to hit this particular VIP, this 10.251.5, it's not going to send a re request up to the northbound uh, hardware-based firewall. It's going to send it down southbound into the virtualization layer. So that traffic is going to be forwarded down to the to one of the edges because it's going to be uh, equal cost multipath. One of the edges is going to receive that traffic. It's going to uh, send it to the respective DMZ edge internal firewall. Let's call it, right? Uh, internal DMZ firewall. And uh, through the, the transit logical switch VXLAN subnet. It's going to send it over to the DMZ edge, and then the DMZ edge is going to um, fulfill that request and forward it to the web virtual machines. So what we're doing here now, in order to make this happen, we have to uh, do some, some routing manipulation. And we're going to do that in the next uh, uh, video series where I'll show you what the uh, BGP filters are going to need to be in order to make sure that traffic uh, conforms to this policy that I mentioned, all external goes through the hardware, into the DMZ, transit VLAN, and into the edge gateways. And all internal goes through the edge 01, edge 02, ECMP pair, and then into the DMZ edge uh, gateways, um, into the uh, DMZ logical switch. So the web servers will send the request to the application layer. 
where the VIP for the application will be hosted on standalone internal shared services load balancers. And these load balancers will be connected to the corporate logical switch with uh, the default gateway being the DLR, the distributed logical router. So the load balancer receives the application request, okay, and forwards it to the real application tier. And that real application tier is hosted on the application logical switch, sending it to one of the um, application uh, servers. Similarly, the application logical switch is connected to the DLR, distributed logical router, where the DLR is the default gateway for the application virtual machines. So the application server receives the request and forwards a SQL query to the database server, which is hosted on a separate logical switch, configured in the same manner as the application and corporate logical uh, switches. And all this behavior, okay, um, between the uh, request coming into the VIP, uh, from the VIP to the web, from the web to the load balancer, the internal load balancer, from the load balancer to the app, from the app to the database, it's all VXLAN uh, configured. Uh, it's all VXLAN within the virtualization layer, and NSX is responsible for making all that magic happen. <clears throat> now, that is pretty much the network architecture and what a packet flow would look like through the network virtualization layer. But one other huge feature that NSX has to offer here is the native distributed firewall where you can control traffic into and out of a VM. And this distributed firewall uh, provides security filtering on every host inside the hypervisor and at the kernel level before it actually hits the VNIC or before the packet uh, hits the VNIC. So with this design, we are treating the uh, DMZ edge gateways kind of like north-south firewalls, specifically for the DMZ. And one of the reasons for this design is that some customers have both internal and external firewalls, for example, creating a DMZ sandwich. And that's what we're kind of trying to accomplish here, uh, logically extending the DMZ uh, into um, uh, into NSX and leveraging NSX's VXN capabilities. Another design would have been just to do a VLAN back port group and, and not leverage VXLAN or maybe do a VXLAN bridging. But, you know, we needed a load balancer anyway. Uh, but, you know, there are different ways we could have done this uh, as well. So for the security approach, at a minimum, we would enable firewall rules in the DFW distributed firewall to only allow specific traffic destined, you know, to this web tier uh, for ports such as port 80 and 443 and only allow relevant web to application uh, traffic. And in our configuration example of our uh, three tier application that I'm going to prepare in the next videos, this traffic is also going to be port 80. So webs, uh, even though they're going to be accessed on port 80, they're going to communicate with uh, the application through the uh, load balancers on port 80 as well. And then, you know, secure up the communication between the app tier and the database tier only to, uh, you know, relevant uh, SQL ports. And this will achieve that east to west firewall security that you natively get when you did when you deploy NSX. And what we will also do as a bonus is to add some firewalling to the uh, DMZ edge gateways for traffic uh, entering from the DMZ edge, um, from actually the um, entering the DMZ edge from the DMZ transit layer. So. Well, this pretty much sums up uh, the network architecture blueprint. Okay, let's now take a look at our Cisco UCS blade design. We have our UCS fabric interconnects each uh, dual honed uh, in a port channel with the Cisco Nexus data center core switches, and each port channel is passing all respective VLANs, as I mentioned previously. We're going to provision two. 
uh, UCS virtual NICs, uh, here depicted as uh, VNIC1 and VNIC2, and each VNIC will be mapped to their respective fabric interconnect. So uh, VNIC1 will always map to fabric interconnect A, and VNIC2 will always map to fabric interconnect B. And since we are not enabling fabric interconnect failover, we'll rely on VMware for the failover manageability. So um, in VMware, we're going to see uh, VNIC zero and VMNIC. I'm sorry, VMNIC zero and VMNIC one presented as uplinks, and behind the scenes, they're actually mapped to VNIC one and VNIC two respectively. Uh, so these will be our uplinks for the VDS, uh, the virtual distributed switch here, uh, named VDS main. And I chose to use a single VDS as the uh, multiple VDS design is debatable on Cisco UCS since you know all the blades are within the same uh, UCS fabric. Um, the VDS here will host the the uh, management port group, uh, which will be uh, VLAN back to VLAN 100. Uh, we also have a multi NIC V motion pair of VLAN back port groups on VLAN 110. Uh, there are also two VLAN uh, backed edge port groups, one for VLAN 300 and one for VLAN 301, where our NSX edge gateways will use, uh, you know, to peer BGP with the data center uh, switches. And then we have a, um, a DMZ VLAN backed port group to connect the DMZ edge gateways uh, with the DMZ. And there's also going to be some BGP peering over that DMZ port group. Um, the DMZ trunk will be used for our uh, DMZ edge uh, trunk sub interface configuration, which I'll show you later. And lastly, we will uh, need another VLAN back port group, which will be configured for um, uh, VXLAN traffic. Now, I'm considering this a medium sized deployment where I collapse the management and the edge onto the same cluster and dedicate one or more clusters to compute. But, you know, another reason for this design is that I was only given five blades for this demo. But in reality, if this was a large implementation, then I would have dedicated three blades for the management cluster uh, and two or more blades for the edge cluster and, and how many of our blades needed for the uh, compute cluster. So based on this uh, medium size design, I am uh, assigning uh, vCenter, uh, the active uh, DLR uh, control VM, the active instance of the DMZ edge gateway, uh, one of the NSX controllers, the internal standalone NSX load balancer, and active directory all to blade one. For blade two, I am assigning the edge zero one uh, gateway, uh, the passive DLR control VM, the uh, standby internal standalone load balancer, and the secondary NSX controller. In blade three, we have the uh, secondary edge two gateway, zero two gateway, the uh, NSX manager, uh, the standby instance of the DMZ edge gateway, and the uh, third NSX controller. And these are all the components that I will need to support this particular design. And lastly, uh, all of the uh, compute virtual machines, such as the web, the app, the database, go onto the compute blades. Now, in order to make these management VMs sticky to these particular blades, as I have shown here, I will uh, configure anti-affinity rules, which I'll, I'm going to show you later um, you know, in the configuration stage. So as for the uh, blade profile, each blade will have the same configuration with respect to teaming and failover. Uh, and here you can see uh, starting on the left, uh, the management port group will have an active standby NIC configuration based on port ID. Now there's a mistake here because uh, VM NIC 0 is actually standby and VM NIC 1 um, is actually um, active. And the same design goes for vMotion. As for um, edge port group 1, it will only utilize VM NIC 0 uh, with VM NIC 1 not in use. And the same design for port, uh, edge port group 2, but it's flipped. So VMNIC1 is actually going to be used and not VMNIC0. 
The DMZ will use a standby active configuration, uh, also you know based on port ID, uh, as all of them are. And the DMZ trunk and the VXM port will utilize both uplinks actively based on port ID. Um, and you know here we have a uh, a multi VTEP uh, configuration, which I'll show you later. So you know. Um, again, this is basically the uh, Cisco UCS and vSphere VDS and uplink design uh, needed to support the uh, proposed architecture. So let's uh, jump into the configuration stage and see how all these components are configured.